You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics once again, and you're going to have the pleasure of listening to Dan Pitcher. He's the Bengals quarterback coach. Before he was coaching quarterbacks, he was in the personnel department, evaluating talent, putting together information on prospective draft prospects, also NFL veteran free agents. So he has a good understanding of what it takes to put a team together from a big picture standpoint, and then tunnel vision at this stage, working with the quarterbacks. And boy, it must be a real pleasure working with the straw that stirs the drink. Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow. We'll find out about all of that in our conversation with Dan Pitcher. Appreciate you joining us in the trenches, as always. I know you could be doing a lot of things, and the fact that you chose to observe in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, means a lot. And I know a big reason you did choose to do so is our special guest, quarterback coach Dan Pitcher, who is a very, very brilliant young mind that the Cincinnati Bengals are fortunate to have working with their quarterbacks. Coach, how you be? Doing well, Lapp. Uh, glad to be with you. Yeah, I'm, it's my pleasure. So this year, after the performance that that uh, your offense put on down the stretch and getting all the way to Super Bowl 56 out there in L- L.A. and just not quite having enough to get over the top, what do you do for an encore? I mean, uh, how, how many – how many tweaks and adjustments are you are you tempted to try that you have to hold yourself back? I mean, do you still have the same core? Where do you go? How do you go about it? Well, I think it starts with um, making sure that foundation that that allowed us to have success last year is healthy and uh, and strong. And so that means you 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 can't skip any steps. So you you start the same way you start every year. Um, you make sure that the, the understanding of the basics uh, is there and, and continues to grow amongst our group. And it has, you know, being that we're now year, uh, you know, approaching year four in the offense with Zach and for a lot of these guys have, have been here for the majority of that time. So you got to make sure that, that that stuff is all healthy. And then, um, you know, you, you study the league and you study yourself and, and you see where are some areas maybe where we can add a little bit here and there. But um, you can't just assume that you're going to pick up right where you left off. You build on what you how, you, you know, the success you had last year and, and uh, you, you allow that to propel you forward. But you got to make sure you got the, the basics taken care of. Yeah, you mentioned the, the fourth year and the continuity and consistency of the fourth year with Zach all three of his coordinators in the three phases, offense, defense, special teams, and a, and a big number of assistants, that continuity, that consistency, and then players, you know, that are in, in that uh, in that time frame as well. It's not an old football team, but there are quite a few players entering that fourth, fifth, sixth year. They've all been together for a good number of those, you know, entering their prime. That's That's valuable stuff, isn't it? It is because you know what to expect from one another. And there's already a very high degree of trust established, uh, you know, amongst the players, amongst the coaching staff, like you referenced, you know, so a lot of the pitfalls that just naturally occur when people are getting to know each other and getting to learn how to work with one another, well, we've already overcome those. Um, And it doesn't mean there's not going to be more going forward. Uh, It's never easy, but, you know, we know how to work with one another. The players know how to play with each other. um, And I think that gives us a really good chance. So you guys peaked at the right time, um, seven and four, then lose a couple of games at home, the LA Chargers, and then the San Francisco 49ers in overtime at Paul Brown Stadium, both games, to go seven and six, but then catch fire. And your quarterback, Joe Burrow, in that four-game stretch, uh, San Francisco uh, game, uh, after that, going out to Denver, and then taking care of Baltimore and taking care – of uh was it oh kansas city after that in cincinnati that four game stretch didn't play against cleveland but that four game stretch 11 touchdown passes no interceptions then in the playoffs he throws five touchdowns a couple of interceptions so in those six games that were pivotal man you're talking 16 touchdown passes two picks that dog will hunt won't it yeah i mean joe's you know just look 
at his career, um, you know, Joe's at his best when we need him the most. And that's great players at that position. That's a quality that they have. And so, you know, we know right now when we need him the most, you know, is week one against Pittsburgh, you know? So, I mean, it's just, we take it one week at a time. Um, and we have confidence that whether it be week one or the Super Bowl, uh, we got the guy we need at that spot. And, and that just gives everybody else confidence around him. Yeah, I mean, uh, Joe's such a, a quick study, such a brilliant football mind. You know, I'm, I'm sure uh, he was at, at practice on Monday in a golf cart, you know, just doing all the mental things, had the earpiece in listening to you coaches and, uh, and in communication with quarterbacks. I mean, he he's still – right on top of everything mentally, isn't he? Yeah, we have, I'll speak for myself. I have no concerns there. And I know that as a coaching staff, we have no concerns. I mean, Joe is as good as they come um, when it comes to his, you know, his football IQ, uh, his preparedness uh, from a mental standpoint. And so, you know, I know he wishes he was getting the physical reps right now and he's doing a great job getting the mental reps in the classroom and and observing practice. Uh, So we know he's going to pick up you know, right where he left off when he's back out there practicing. You know, like you said, Joe would like to have the reps now. He'd like to have every rep. Joe Joe just (laughs) loves football, worships football. There's no question about it. But uh, it could have been worse. You know, what if in the second half of the season, those final eight games, that stretch is a grueling stretch. If if it happened then and you lose him for a couple of games or more, that would be – so I I guess the silver lining is the timing wasn't horrible. And and Joe has shown he's a pretty quick healer. But certainly, you want to err on the side of caution. I mean, you want to put him in bubble wrap till that uh, Pittsburgh game. In my mind, I mean, he's he's that important. Obviously, he's he's an unbelievable football player. He really is. He's the straw that stirs the drink, isn't he, Coach? It's safe to say, yeah. And we got we got a lot of other really really good pieces. There's no doubt about that. But uh, Joe makes everyone better. So let's talk about Brandon Allen a little bit. Um, he's getting reps that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And there's a trickle down effect there. You know, Jake Browning uh, and, and Drew Platt, uh, Plitt, I should say, the same way. How, how t- tell us about those three quarterbacks, how they, what kind of a training camp are they have? And I know it's still early stages. You just finished the ramp up stage and just recently put on shoulder pads, but what's it been looking like? Sure. I, you know, I think they're all doing a really nice job. It's, you know, when, when, we found out that, you know, Joe wasn't going to be able to practice for a little bit there, you know, really it's incumbent on us, the the rest of us in the room and and the message I gave those guys and they, they didn't even need to hear it. They were already on top of it is this can't slow our offense down at all. You know, we have to have the same pace of development through training camp that we would have had as a unit if Joe was out there taking those reps with the ones. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity for Brandon to get that experience with, you know, with the number one receiver group, with the number one line, making all the protection adjustments and doing all the things that he would have to do if we needed him to play. And then, like you mentioned, the trickle down effect with Jake Browning. I mean, they, they're basically, you know, they're both getting a lot of reps right now and, and they're doing a nice job. And, and it gives Jake an opportunity to show what he can do when maybe otherwise he would have been left with very few reps. So, you know, those two have have executed the offense the way we need them to. Um, you know, they've made mistakes like you would expect, but they grow from those mistakes. They know exactly what we want to do. They're both prepared mentally. Um, and so it's a great opportunity for them to to further themselves as football players and to, to try to further their standing here with the Bengals. You know, I, I know it's got to be frustrating to, uh, to Joe and everybody, you know, all coaches, teammates, everybody. The fact that that, that having a appendicitis, come on. I mean, that, that's a, that's a rare scenario. And he was busting his tail, unbelievable shape he was in. I mean, his speed was about everything. And, and, and Jamar Chase is busting his tail. I mean, he's hired, a, you know, working with a track coach and working, you know, continuing to uh, work on his speed and endurance and everything. And he comes back in unbelievable shape. So these guys, they're not they're not content. You know, it's like I, 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 get, I get more to do. I get more to gain. That's what you like, right? I mean, players like that, your best players setting that kind of standard and always trying to raise the bar. Yeah, I mean, nobody's nobody's resting on their laurels. I mean, that's not – what we as competitors are are wired to do you know there's there's somebody that's constantly trying to take your job there's somebody that's constantly you know trying to to knock you down and and in a league as competitive as the one we're in if you're not striving to get better you're getting worse um and so you know we we expect our 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 key players like the guys you just mentioned to set that standard for the rest of the group and 
these are professional athletes. They, this is their livelihood, and um, they they take it very seriously by and large. So you know we we got the right guys in the room, and um, they come back in shape. They come back ready to go. There's that uh, age old axiom, cliche, whatever you want to call it. You know, iron sharpens iron, but I do believe it. I do believe in it. I've you know been exposed and to it, and 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 when you work every day against a great player, you can't help but get better. Even though it's a practice environment, you're going to learn some things that are going to help you uh, in your matchups during the course of the season. And the defensive football team is well put together, and, and it's, uh, it's sprinkled with pretty darn good talent. Working against that group, uh, ones against ones, and, and for Brandon Allen to be working in that environment, that's only going to help everybody, isn't it? No doubt. I mean, that's a great group. It's they're hard to they're hard to play against. They're hard to practice against. They're smart. Uh, they're tough up front. They got guys that can rush the passer that that make it difficult to throw from a clean pocket. You know, and then when you talk about the guys in the secondary, you know, Cheeto, Mike Hilton, Vaughn, um, you know, guys that and, and you know that's not there's there's others too, but they're they're smart. They understand you know the coverages that that they're being asked to play. They know where the weaknesses are, so they know how to disguise those weaknesses. They try to bait you into throws and, um, you know, it's not, they're not just out there playing uh, the day one, you know, textbook version of cover two. I mean, they are they're They know exactly what they're trying to do, where they're trying to get you to throw the ball. Um, and so it's a great test for Brandon and for Jake and, and for us as an offense as a whole, they're definitely making us better. You know, I know that uh, obviously a, a goal for every team that I've played on and every team that I've watched, everybody wants to, be fast. Everybody wants to have great team speed. This team has team speed defensively, offensively. I mean, you're, you're looking at people that can run. And the guy that loves that, the trickle down uh, to Darren Simmons, you know, has to be a positive as well because they you, no substitute for speed on special teams as well. How big a deal is it? How, how fast is this football team? Is this probably the fastest you've been associated with? I mean, we have speed. You know, it's it's hard to compare year to year. You know, there's always guys, you know, you, know, you hope to accumulate groups of guys that can run because if you don't have them, then it's an uphill battle. Uh, and we have plenty of them. So it's tough to say, you know, based on, you know, what, what's been here in the past. I just know what we have now. And, and that's guys that can offensively anyway, that can that can threaten the defense, um, that can threaten the secondary vertically, um, you know, and, and then on defense, there's guys that, are flying around the field that can close out of the post that can get after the passer that can run sideline to sideline so um it's a great thing to have and and we're fortunate that we have plenty of those guys so talked with robert livingston not too long ago and and you guys have similar paths in that you were involved from personnel side of things and now you know x and knowing as a coach to me that is just a great overall big you big lens perspective of what it takes to be successful in the national football league, how the team is put together and then, you know, sprinkling personnel into the, to fit those, those pieces and then excellent knowing and scheming uh, to try to get as many advantages as you possibly can. Do you feel like you've been on a tremendous career path to, uh, to, to land where you are as the quarterback coach with the Cincinnati Bengals right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, uh, treasure the time that I spent in, in personnel. And, and to be honest, I, it, it's, it felt like, um, kind of the detour when I took it because I knew I always wanted to coach, but now that I did it, um, I'm so thankful that I did, um, uh, because I learned, you know, a, a lot of things that otherwise I, I wouldn't have learned, uh, I learned how to evaluate players. I learned what it takes, takes to put together a roster, how the salary cap affects that. Um, and just everything that goes into that. I mean, there's a lot that goes on in that world of personnel. Um, and it, you know, that, that just doesn't necessarily get seen or consumed by the general public. And so I give, you know, those guys upstairs in our building, a ton of credit. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to be done there to make sure that, that the, the roster stays healthy and that you're setting yourself up for success, not only in, you know, in the current moment, but moving forward. And so, um, I'm gr grateful. I learned that side of it. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm probably a little rusty on that stuff compared to what I was, you know, when I was, when I was knee deep in it, um, sure. but definitely that background is helpful. Um, and, and I'm glad that I have it. What's it like in the off season? You know, you, you have a team that went to the Super Bowl and 
you guys are meeting as a staff in the off season and you get, uh, this is after the draft and free agent signing. So, you know, additional talent you've accumulated and you, you know, the football team is not going to be the exact same as it was the year before, but there are core pieces that are going to translate, you know, from one year to the next. And it's probably like sitting in a, in a room full of uh, guys that have doctorates in offensive football play, all these fertile minded guys throwing ideas out there. And how, how crazy is it? Is it like, is it almost like an idea chamber in the off season throwing things out there or is it controlled? And, and, you know, you have your core plays and you maybe, you know, add a few wrinkles here and there. You know, it's, I think every staff's different, you know, how, how you approach the off season. Um, the one thing that, that Zach does such a great job of is, is delegation of duties. And so, you know, every, every coach on the offensive staff, really has their area of specialty that they're responsible for. And, and that, you know, so, you know, Hey, I'm going to focus my off season efforts on studying whatever that area may be. And I may discover, Hey, here's a couple concepts that are, you know, that are being used around the league that are having a lot of success. Uh, maybe we don't do them at all, or maybe we do a version of that and, and Hey, let's tweak this or, you know, and so, you know, you walk down to Brian Callahan's office and say, Hey, I, I sent you this cut up, you know, I think this might be, you know, something that would help us out moving forward and and he'll take a look at it maybe zach takes a look at it maybe say hey you know what great let's let's do it or you know what eh, let's put it on the back burner you know there's maybe there's a little there's a little too much time that we would need to invest in that uh to get the type of return out of our investment and it's probably not worth it so you know there's all those conversations that take place um you know within your individual area that you're being asked to to be an expert in and um, you know, so that's kind of where those ideas come from. It's fun. I mean, if you love football, it's a lot of fun. You get to come here and study tape and, and, uh, draw X's and O's and, and try to figure out how to, how to score points, you know, and that's, you know, I think why a lot of us get involved in this along with wanting to teach and, and be around the game. We've been around our whole lives, but I love it. I love that part of it. Uh, and it's really enjoyable. You know, the, uh, not, not only, you know, Joe, uh, Barrow not able to participate in, at this point in time, but, a lot of the uh, the free agent offensive linemen that everybody's so excited about, and rightfully so. You know, Collins hasn't been able to to go yet. Kappa is limited in in what he can do. Karras is in there, you know, grinding uh, every day. But once that offensive line gets intact, uh, how excited might you be? I, I really respect the fact that last year, and, and and I don't want to disparage anybody because the team went to the Super Bowl and almost won the damn thing. So the offensive line obviously made a contribution there, but you guys did a great job game planning to, you know, cover up and, and hide, you know, help it some weaknesses. And that's five times harder than just game planning, you know, and if there's a little bit better group up front areas of the field that you couldn't quite attack. Now you're able to attack with different route combinations and everything else that, uh, you know, you might be able to take advantage of maybe the line of scrimmage is captured and Joe Mixon's making his first cut beyond it instead of, behind it or at it, and now you're controlling down in distance situations. I mean, how big a factor could that offensive line when fully intact health-wise, you know, be on your offense? Well, you know, I'll just say we're, we're really excited about the players that we have in that unit. Um, and, and like, you know, the guys that you mentioned that, that we added there on top of the guys coming back with the experience from last year's run, I think it just makes for a, a really solid core of, players that are tough that love football and are coached by an excellent coach and so when you when you put that all together um you know i know that regardless of how it shakes out from a from a competition standpoint when we go out there week one against the steelers we're going to have a really good group that knows exactly what's being asked of them they're going to play harder than the guys across from them and so you got a chance uh you know when, when that's the case and it all starts up there it makes everybody else's job easier whether you're talking about running the ball, whether you're talking about, you know, the, the what you can do and play action off of the run game, whether you're talking about picking up pressures on third down, all that stuff is easier when that group is, is a cohesive unit executing at a high level. So I think we have the makings of that. I think just like every unit on our team, we're in the process of getting there. No, we're not ready yet, uh, but we will get there because uh, we have the right people. You know, the thing that uh, was, you know, just mind boggling to me, was the turnover scenario in in the playoffs 
You had nine takeaways as a unit defensively, eight interceptions by seven different guys and a fumble recovery. So he had nine takeaways and equally excellent, only two giveaways in four football games, plus seven in, in the in the uh, in the turnover department. That's I mean, in the in the playoff game against Tennessee, three interceptions trumped nine quarterback sacks. That's how important turnovers are. I mean, Tannehill threw a pick the first pass of the game, the last pass of the game, and one in between. And that was a big story, you know, in the football game. Turnovers, I know you guys preach it all the time. They are massive, aren't they? Yeah, they're huge. The turnover differential is huge. And uh, our, our guys on defense during that stretch you, you, you spoke about were outstanding. And it gave us a chance to win those games that we may otherwise not have had. Um, you know, very, very specifically, you look at the end of that Tennessee game. I mean, that's that's an interception that gets us in an opportunity to, to you know, make a chunk play and be in field goal range. So, you know, that's outstanding. And then offensively, you know, we know how important the ball is. And and as quarterbacks, we touch it every play. And so it's the most important thing on the field. Uh, we have to make sure we're doing our due diligence to take care of it. But we always speak about that within the within the context of being calculated, aggressive decision makers. And we never, uh, you don't want to talk about, hey, don't turn the ball over. You know, it's like saying, hey, don't think of a duck. What's the first thing you think of? A duck, right? right? So you, right. You, you focus it positively and you say, we need to be great decision makers. We need to be calculated about when we take our risks and we got to learn from the mistakes when we make them. And that's what allows you to, to be attacking, have an attacking mindset, go put points on the board, but do so in a way that's not going to put the team uh, at risk. And that's our goal every day. And some days we're better than others, but that's how we're always going to approach it. You know, getting back to, to Joe for a second, last, uh, or I should say in OTAs, watching him um, get his speed back, you know, I'd see where he'd complete a pass and he'd just decide to sprint 10 or 15 yards, you know. Oh, my gosh, man, he was that kid can run now. He can run. And, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking that, there's, there's so he played at such a high level, but there's more there, isn't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about guys going into year three, you know, and a guy that I know has aspirations to play for a really long time, and I have those same aspirations for him. And so there, there is certainly plenty of room for improvement. Uh, he's only going to get better with reps, and there's not much that he can't do. Um, so. Just really excited for this season and, and um, you know, to see, you know, how he does this year. So if you had to pick something that you think he does best or if it's, you know, more than one thing, if it's a couple of things or three things, what might those be, Coach? You know, it's – there's a lot, right? Yeah, he's, a rare, right. he's a rare processor. Um, I like he's that. Got, he's got excellent – I like that. <laughs> he's got excellent recall. And so he can make decisions in the moment uh, at a at a rate that not many others on this earth can 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 do. You know, so you combine that with um, you know just elite accuracy, and then uh, fierce competitiveness, the ability to extend plays when needed, underrated athleticism. Um, you know, I we could talk all day about the things that make Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, you know, he's a great football player and I'm glad we have him. Yeah. I'll tell you, he is, uh, he is very unique. One of a kind. Uh, there's, there's no two ways about that. The, the relationship that, that Joe has with Jamar chase, some of it, it's almost like beyond coaching, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's kind of like it's not ESP, but it's like, you know, it's on another level, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, when you got guys like those two and, and T and Mix and TB, a lot of times as coaches, the best thing you can do is get out of the way, <laughs> right. um, you know, and let them foster those relationships because they're the ones out there. We can do our best to put them in positions to succeed. And we do. And we work very hard to do it. But we're not between the lines. And so when they're able to establish the kind of relationships that they have and the trust that they have, that is absolutely 100% what you want to see. And so you, you just let it go and you feed it and you water it and you let them, um, you know, make it what they want to make it because they're, 
they're elite competitors that want to win every down, win every game. So love having them and, and love to see that, uh, you know, relationship continue to grow. I think that's another rare ability that, that Joe has is to watch a receiver run and the way he runs his routes, the way he sinks his hips, gets in and out of cuts and how sharp the cuts are or whatever, instead of rounded. And he, he kind of processes that so quickly and, and connects, you know, I mean, Kwame Lasseter, watching him throw to Kwame Lasseter, I'm like, man, they kind of get on a same page so damn quickly. That's a unique talent Joe has too, isn't it? It is. It's something that as a quarterback, you spend your whole life throwing to receivers and, and understanding their body language and understanding the, the spatial awareness, how they relate to the nearest defender the pace that they enter a cut with the pace that they exit the cut with. And so you, you just start to kind of have an uh, uh, understanding of these things. You know, it's, it's almost like a sixth sense, you know, just being playing the position for as long as these guys have played it. And so some guys are easier than others to read as, as receivers. And those guys are, are what we call it friendly targets, right? Guys that are easy to throw to. Um, and, and they have some of those qualities you, you talked about. And, and then Joe, you know, he's, you gotta be able to do that as a quarterback. You gotta be able to, to feel how your receiver is going to separate, uh, at the top of the route. And, and he can do that really well. So coach, get if the running game with Joe Mixon, get the running game going, and then you can play action pass and then you can, you know, drop back pass and you can boot, get out of pocket. I mean, how, this offense, how, Sky's the limit, right? I mean, there, there's there's just, there's nothing this offense really cannot do. It's just a matter of what's it going to do best. That's our goal. You know, we want to be we want to be able to do everything. Um, and but within the context of of our system, how we practice and and the standards we set for ourselves. So, you know, you, you don't. It's not just that we have a million plays because we can, you know, we, we, we want to get good at things and, and practice those things and, and make sure that they all fit together and, and do that in a way that accentu accentuates the ability of, you know, our skill position players and, and, and the guys we have up front. So that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're hard at work doing. Um, and that's what we're going to continue to do, you know, leading up to the opener in September. How big a consideration is tempo and being able to change tempo uh, based on what's required on time of the game, opponent you're playing, what they do well, what they don't. How, how big is being able to handle multiple tempos? Sure, that's that's a part of uh, you know how you decide to attack a team, and it's the, not only the plays that you run, but the pace at which you run them. So having the ability to get in and out of different tempos, I think, only makes you better as an offense. Um, and that requires great communication. It requires great conditioning and an understanding of everybody on the field of what we're trying to get done. So, you know, it's always great when you can, when you can kind of vary up how fast you play. Coach can't thank you enough. I know that, uh, today was a, a busy day in terms of meetings. The players are now through the ramp up period. Now the pads are on and before you know it, you're playing the Arizona Cardinals. It's crazy. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's it's always sometimes the preseason gets a bad rap. I love it. I, I like seeing guys that young players that are working hard to learn the offense and practice, get a chance to go out there and and show what they can do. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. So I, I'm looking forward to that opportunity for our guys here, uh, you know, in a week and a half when that comes up against Arizona and uh, and then the you know the two subsequent games after that. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm with you, coach. To me, a big part of it is, you know, certain guys that are going to make the team. I mean, you probably can pick, I don't know, 35, 40. But the final 12 or 15 or whatever it is, how that composition is arrived at, you know, and, and watching how the team is put together based on preseason performances and especially special teams. Darren Simmons is going to have a big say in a lot of that stuff. To me, that's a fascinating part of it. I agree. Uh, watching watching how teams around the National Football League are, are put together in, uh, in those, you know, few weeks of training camp. Very interesting. No doubt. Coach, can't thank you enough. Thanks for carving time for us, and I look forward to doing it again. All right, Lap, you got it. We'll see you out there. Have the best day you ever had, sir. All right, you too. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. For 
Jake's? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.